Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Rohan Ramdranath, the Principal Solutions Architect. And today, in this segment, I'm going to talk about cloud agnostic DR as a service. So uh, from the last two sections, what we saw is how can we secure on-prem, commercial cloud, multi-cloud uh, based security with optimal connectivity, and how we can basically secure, once we move my applications into the cloud, how I can secure transactions between those applications and give full cloud workload protection at a micro as well as a macro level. Uh, and the last thing, right, the last uh, use case is really about, you know, freedom, right, independence, right, in the sense that an organization can pick and choose different cloud uh, hyperscalers, different cloud service providers, depending on what service they want to consume, but they should be able to seamlessly switch context between those different clouds as well, without any compromise to their security baseline. And once again, just to, uh, you know, show you the depth of the stack that is available in our unified platform VOS, which we have now orchestrated in the cloud. You'll see a couple of more uh, knobs, uh, which are highlighted in red, because this is going to marry in a couple of extra features that we have in order to do DRSA service. So I'll talk through it uh, while we go through the uh, demo as well, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is that, you know, we built this up, right? We looked at, you know, how I can uh, establish a, a cloud gateway on Azure, how we do a cloud gateway in AWS, I have something on-prem. And uh, what I'm going to show you is that, let's say that, you know, this user on-prem is basically going to this Anycast service, which is there in Azure, and is uh, transacting some sort of application or content from it, right? So let me uh, basically fire that off and I'll talk through the scenarios uh, that we are going to walk through. So I'll log into this and uh, let me just uh, power this back on. So let's just make sure that we have reachability. Yeah, and we do. Okay, so I'm going to download this 20 gig uh, file and this could really be anything. It could be application streaming content. It could really be anything that we're interacting between these uh, between our cloud data center and our on-prem data center. Now, let's say that, you know, while this user is transacting with this application, there happens to be a external threat, right? And this external threat, uh, let's say it was a DOS attack against the infra in the cloud, right? Now remember, every cloud provider gives you provisions for DOS protection, but that's a paid service. More importantly, direction counts. So if it's an internal a kind of a compromised workload, which is you know kind of flooding the network with traffic, the kind of the DDoS protection that you get on a VPC or VNet has several limitations. So uh, over here, uh, what I'm going to do in order to basically fire off this DOS attack is I'm going to generate a uh, UDP flood, uh, right? And this is going to probably is going to pump out about uh, 100,000 packets per second of UDP, and they're all going to be from different sources and different destinations. So it's basically trying to consume the resources in terms of CPU, compute, and memory, not only on the Versa lines, but what is there behind Versa, right? So we're, we're basically trying to do a DOS, denat this, and send it back over here. It's trying to consume the resources over here. So uh, first of all, let's go ahead and visualize that original transaction which took place, right? And let's see uh, you know, how that basically looks like. So I'm logging into, you know, uh, what we have um, over here on prem, and you can see, you know, because of the transaction which is happening, there's a little bit of traffic which is going um, over here, right? And if I want to visualize what that entire traffic looks like, I can just come to my sessions, and I can take a look at the session over here, and then I can take a look at, you know, this particular HTTP session, and I can see that you know that uh, 20 gig file which I was pulling. Uh, from there, in uh, just a minute, you'll start seeing a graph populate, which shows you uh, how it looks like from a upload download direction. And you can see there's some transactions which are happening, um, even though under the influence of a DOS attack. How do we know there's a DOS attack? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's the next question, right? So I'm logging into, and this is all the same appliances, just multiple different tabs to make it simple. So if I come back to next generation firewall, and if I look at, you know, DOS, and if I look at my DOS policy, so you'll start seeing that... Uh, there are some, it's close to what, 2 million hits at this point of time. And you can see that it's continuously, you know, updating as per that UDP flood. So what does this policy, you know, this DOS policy basically look like? We can take a look at that. So I can jump back into the configuration tab. And if I go here to DOS, I can show you what that particular DOS uh, policy, which I've configured looks like. So all I've said is go ahead and protect my infra, protect the services behind my WAS instance in the cloud using this DOS profile. And this DOS profile basically says, go ahead and put TCP, UDP, or ICMP, uh, anything which is more than a thousand packets per second, I've intentionally kept it low, right? Go ahead and uh, drop it. 
right? Uh, go ahead and make those transactions not go through. But if it's healthy traffic, which is not matching this particular key of being a DOS attack, go ahead and allow it to basically go through. Now, uh, let's say, right, uh, while this threat is going on, let's talk about some internal challenges that we could have in the cloud as well, right? Now, what would happen, for example, let's say that in the worst case, my cloud data center went down, right? It would go down for any reason, right? Uh, uh, irrespective of DOS or not, let's say this AZ went down, right? Or you know what? Let's make it even better. Let's say both AZs went down, okay? So both the uh, AZs and Azure are down. Now, let's see what the expectation should be in such a case. Now, in order to simulate an entire AZ going down, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off all the services which are going to be running on the uh, Versa stack over here, okay? So if I log back in here, I'm just going to stop all the services. Okay. Now let's take a look at that transaction that stream live as uh, what uh, is going to happen on the backend. So if I come back to the session, which I was looking at, you'll notice that there was a drop, right? There was a drop because I uh, basically stopped all these services, but that service is now picked up, right? It is picked up and it is somehow continuing to transact. Now, where is it actually going? Now, if I take a look at what I have on AWS, you will start noticing that there's going to be a bump in traffic now because the traffic has now seamlessly switched over to AWS, right? So you can see 21A was my AWS branch. And now you can start seeing, you know, that particular download, which was happening, the transaction, which was happening is now moving through the AWS side. And there's no uh, break in that particular transaction, which was happening because of the content replication happening on the backend for this particular uh, service. Now, uh, so with that, essentially, and you know, if I just want to visualize also what that particular threat looks like, if I come back to threats, I go to DOS, I look at it, it's a flood. Uh, I want to visualize what that flood looks like. Like I said, variable rate UDP flood, so you can actually see what this particular transaction looks like. Um, there are different alerts and alarms, basically, you know, uh, notifying that, you know, there was in fact a DOS attack on my branch on um, Azure. And uh, I, in fact, have gone ahead and dropped it as per the key, which I've configured as the DOS profile. So, uh, you know, the key takeaway here is, right, irrespective of whether you had a external threat, irrespective of whether you had a data center failure, uh, you know, application content was not affected and you were able to seamlessly switch over between, you know, your content servers in Azure to AWS. I'm just thinking as far as firewalls go, right, they're, they're stateful. And, uh, and the only way you're able to continue a, a TCP connection, uh, you know, like you would through, uh, through an A side, B side type firewall situation is you have to share the connection table. So is that what's going on here? Are you, are you sharing the connection table between the two Versa uh, cloud gateways between yeah. Azure and AWS? So, yeah. so in our cluster, right, we could configure basically stateful firewalling, which basically means, as you said, very rightly, you'll you'll replicate all the different, uh, the phi tuple information, the NAT information and everything else between everything in the cluster, right? And that's how, you know, basically if a TCP transaction is going on, it will continue to basically go on. You could also choose to switch off the TCP SYN bit, right? Which means to say that, you know, if the traffic is not statefully replicated, you just want the traffic to continue without looking at the TCP first flag, you can so choose to do that as well. So you can use both options, right? A router mode or a firewall and, mode. And which option did you just demonstrate? Yeah, the one which I have over here is basically without the stateful replication. I have stateful replication between the servers over here, but not between the clusters. But again, that's not a, um, a challenge or something because we do support full stateful replication between the clusters as well. Okay, all yeah. right, thank you. Yeah, so I think you've partly, it's Justin here. I, I think you've partly answered the question I had, which was the service that actually runs behind this. So you're, you're essentially doing a network failover. Um, yeah. But the service at the back end needs to have state replicated between Absolutely. State replicated Azure and AWS. Absolutely. State replicated between Azure and AWS on the backbone. And uh, yeah, uh, that is true. Uh, without that, uh, if it's a content stream or something like that, if it was UDP, you could have gotten away with it. But TCP, you absolutely have to have the state replicated. That is correct. And that's what uh, has been done as well. Over here. Or, or even any any kind of application that, that's stateful, which is basically any, any kind application, of application that's valuable. Um, we'll have a database of state somewhere, Absolutely. and that database state needs to be replicated between clouds. The clouds. Correct, correct. That database has to be uh, basically replicated across the clouds. Absolutely, right? If it was, okay. let's say, but if it was, you know, uh, and that sometimes has problems, right? Because of state replication, even though it worked, right, or, uh, in this transaction. Uh, what could also be done is we could think about a, you know, let's say an all hands event, right? Or maybe, uh, you know, a CEO speak event or something where you're just, you know, sending UDP traffic and you're subscribing to a multicast group. 
in that way, you know, uh, you could, it, the failure will be much, much faster, right? So you notice there's a little bit of dip and then it came up again that you won't even notice that in case of, you know, something which is subscribing to a multicast. So I've heard you, you all throughout all this, people using words like notify and alarm. And I've seen a lot of digging through to see what happens, but I haven't heard anything about alerts, notifications. Is, is that somehow mixed in this? Are you going to talk about it next? What is it? I, I can very, yeah. So uh, for any kind of alert that we have, right, for example, be it, uh, you know, for a DOS or any kind of other form of alarm uh, that you would want, right, you can get very, very granular into what we can configure over here. And the good part is that we also have integration with, you know, different uh, tools such different CMBB, uh, ITSM based services using uh, something called webhooks, but in which we can different uh, also alert your third party kind of um, uh, ITSM solutions in case of any kind of uh, alert, right? So uh, one is that, you know, of course, proactively mitigating it from a data plane point of view, but also to alert the required, um, to make the required notifications to different systems. So yes, that 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 is also part of it. And is there some sort of dashboard or something of all the alerts? Yeah. Um, I don't need to see it really. <laughs> we, we can, but we can, you can show us. Yeah, we can show you that. So if I actually come to the... Uh, organization tab and oh i am actually probably in the user context let me show you where it is uh i believe i may not be able to see it in this particular context That's but fine. we can take a look at it on the yeah we can take a look at it on the analytics right um, um just because i've logged into this particular context we can't see it but yes from the analytics right uh, like what i'm showing you over here if you just come to alarms these would be all the different alarms that uh, we can see over here. And if you actually want to see, you know, in detail, what kind of alarms that we could use, let me also show you that. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I'm in a section where I yeah. can't show you that particular kind of notification. It's okay. I just feel like a lot of times you have to do analytics on your alerts so that you're not over or under alerting. Yeah. And so... You know, it's yeah, kind in of fact, in the next section, we could uh, we could actually log into the other context and we'll show you that. Yeah. Okay, perfect, right? So if there are uh, no other questions, that's how you get uh, cloud agnostic DR as a service um, without uh, with cross cloud compliance. And uh, to try out all of this uh, live, you can uh, go ahead and evaluate Versus multi cloud platform using the link on the screen. Thank you very much for tuning in.